site for a night. Hey everybody and welcome back to your Pennsylvania Dutch Minute. I had another viewer request and the email pretty much said, Hey, what can you tell us about Pennsylvania Dutch folk art? And I'll admit right up front, I am not an expert in Pennsylvania Dutch folk art. There are experts out there, people who have studied our art in depth and the motifs and the meanings and all of that stuff. What I want to do today is just go over what I think are the, the main types of folk art, the ones that you will probably see the most or come into contact with the most. And maybe some of you even have this in your house or in your family, uh, in your fam family heirlooms, etc. So again, I'm not going to be giving you the expert explanation of everything here. I'm going to give you just enough background knowledge. And if you want to go out and find, you know, do a little research on your own. Um, please feel free to do. I can give you some uh, places that you can visit here towards the end of the video. But let's jump in, and I'll throw this word at you first. I'll give you one Pennsylvania Dutch word. I'll actually, we got a couple Pennsylvania Dutch words today. But the word for folk art in Pennsylvania Dutch is folk kunst. Folk kunst. Kunst is the word for art. Folk being people. So art of the people. Um, and I want to just go over a small handful of what I consider to be the, as I said, the ones that are most. Um, visible maybe we'll say that and in my opinion the one that is the most visible and the one that really speaks to us as Pennsylvania Dutch people is or are Shire Stane Shire Stane hex signs or barn stars the word in Pennsylvania Dutch Shire Stane is uh, barn stars not hex signs hex signs was a term that was uh, invented later on um, and as you drive through Pennsylvania Dutch country particularly southeast PA there Berks and Lehigh has the highest concentration of hex signs barn stars uh, still around they are probably the most publicly visible aspect of the Pennsylvania Dutch culture you'll see them on our barns um, there has been tons of research done on to you know where these come from why we uh, paint them um, also there's been a lot of controversy and discussion and argument over what do they actually mean I'm not gonna get into any of that in this in this video there's tons of stuff out there that you can look up there's books there's a lot of books that have been written about hex signs uh, feel free to uh, you know find those books read online and, and come to your own conclusion I will say that my family's farm does have hex signs on them um, it's pointed stars uh pretty typical geometric pointed stars and um when i you know when i was a kid it was just always there the design that we have on my family farm uh was taken from a farm that my family previously owned in another part of berks county and if you ask my dad what do they mean uh to him he would just say they they mean that we're Pennsylvania Dutch, you know, that they're pretty, they, they, they're a decorative form of art. So again, I'm not going to get into any of the, um, uh, any of the ideas as to why we do them and what they mean. I'll just say that they are unique to the Pennsylvania Dutch. Um, you will not find, uh, hex signs anywhere else in the country unless they've been purchased, uh, here at, uh, a folk festival by an artist or at a, at a tourist store and then it taken, uh, taken to other places. I've been uh, across the country and it'd be funny, you know, went cross country on my motorcycle one time when we were out in Oregon. And went into this little restaurant for uh, for lunch, and there was a hex sign hanging on the wall. And I was like, "What the heck?" And here, the the owners of the restaurant had were originally from Pennsylvania, and they moved out to Oregon, and etc. So, I mean, you will see them, but I mean, actually, on barns, you will really only see them in 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 Berks, Lehigh, that that part of Pennsylvania Dutch country. All right, the next form of folk art that is uh, not unique to the Pennsylvania Dutch, but one that we've practiced is called Scherenschnitte. Scherenschnitte, which translates into scissor cuttings. I'm sure you've seen these before, uh, where you would make a design out of a piece of paper and then cut it out with scissors. Um, it's a common form of folk art. Uh, it's uh, Some of the designs can get really intricate, um, and then some can be quite simple. And if you think back to your elementary school days, probably in first grade or second grade art class, you probably did a Scherenschnitte of some form, maybe a snowflake. Uh, that you cut out of paper with scissors, but that was, uh, you know, something that the Pennsylvania Dutch do as well, and there's a lot of examples of Scherenschnitte out there. Besides hex signs, I think the, the, the other form of art that's probably the most uh, recognizable as Pennsylvania Dutch is what we call fraktor. Fraktor. Uh, fraktor is our printed uh, art, um, and a lot of times where you'll see these in, in families is what are called Dorfscheine. 
Dolph Shina, which are baptismal certificates. If your family's lucky enough to have one from the 1800s or 1700s, they exist that far back. Uh, it should be a, a treasure in your family that I hope you're taking care of. These were common as a family would have a child baptized. Uh, someone would come to the farm there. Sometimes the the past themselves would fill out the baptismal certificates, and then they would be hung in the in the in the farmhouse or or put into chests and kept. Um, but as you can see, I have some examples here. Um, at, at first, they were all hand done, uh, but then as the 1800s progressed, there were actually printing companies in Harrisburg and in Reading and in Philadelphia that were printing the 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 base uh, and then being painted and then would be the information like the child's name and the date and all that would be handwritten in by somebody else. Um, but fraktor isn't just baptismal certificates. There were other forms of fraktor, whether they were um, just folk art motifs, something with flowers or uh, stars, uh, you know, tulips, particularly hearts. These were all images, angels that were often found and motifs in our art. You would also see the Pennsylvania Dutch, they decorated furniture. I have some examples here of like blanket chests and chairs that would be painted with these Pennsylvania Dutch motifs. Um, and you would find them in, in a farmhouse or in, among the family. So those are just some quick um, types of, of Pennsylvania Dutch folk art. Are there more out there? Absolutely. Uh, Pennsylvania Dutch folk art had this revival in the, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s to cater to, I believe, you know, this tourist trade, post-World War II, booming economy. People were traveling more and coming to Pennsylvania Dutch country. Um, so you started to see Pennsylvania Dutch motifs into things like tea towels, uh, um, uh, tablecloths, um, trays, metal trays, uh, and I mean a lot of those still exist. Uh, you can find them. Uh, they definitely are are folk art, I think, but um, you know that's more of a modern take on it, I guess I would say. And again, I, I'm just speaking from my perspective, but the motifs are there, uh, and I think that's you know that's that's nice. Um, but the traditional stuff, as I said, you know you're really going to see them in the form of barn stars, um, Scherenschnitte, and Fraktor. Um, these these uh, baptismal certificates and things like that, house blessings, um, they exist. There are currently artists working uh, with the old motifs and the old styles and are producing new art, but using these old um, these old motifs and old styles, as I mentioned, uh, and bringing new life to them. So there's tons of resources out there. I'll include some links to some artists and some books in the comment section down below uh, on the YouTube channel so that if you want to find out more information, you can. And there are constantly lectures being given and art exhibits throughout Pennsylvania Dutch country of some of this stuff. A lot of museums have collections as well. Um, so you can check it out if you really want to see your own, you know, firsthand. If you don't happen to have the luxury of owning any traditional Pennsylvania Dutch folk art, you can go out and find some. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, I don't know if you pictures this because I just thought of it right now while I'm shooting this video, but uh, pottery, uh, redware pottery was also a a common form of folk art and you would have plates and dishes made with the the folk art motifs birds angels tulips hearts things like that um so it just came off the top of my head hefner eye uh red redware pottery uh quite common among the pennsylvania dutch so there you go i'll probably think of something else as soon as i hit the stop record button but anyway if you have an idea for a future video you have a question about anything pennsylvania dutch whether it's language whether it's culture whether it's history please feel free to email me my email address is at the end of the video also if you haven't subscribed to the youtube channel why what are you doing you got to subscribe tell your friends about the channel uh and feel free to share any video with all your social media feeds so that we get the message out there and spreading the pennsylvania dutch gospel until next time keep practicing your pennsylvania dutch send me some questions and mock scoot